Hey everybody, what's going on with these patriarchs in the book of Genesis that are living to be seven, eight, nine hundred years old? Was there something in the water? Was the environment cleaner back then? Did they say years when they meant months? Is there something else going on? The reality is much simpler and much more disappointing. These years are simply fictional. They're just made up. They have a chronology. They have these ancient important figures and they're fiddling with the years to have them fit in ways that they want. But this is not novel. This is following in a more ancient tradition that we find in the Sumerian king lists that go back to uh, around 2000 BCE. And in those versions, we have kings reigning before the flood who are reigning from like 28,000 to 43,000 years each. And then we have kings reigning after the flood who are reigning from around 300 to 1500 years each. So as in the book of Genesis, there's a significant drop off uh, with the flood. Now I want to point out some interesting differences between the way these patriarchs are represented in Genesis 4 and Genesis 5 and then point out how later editors of Genesis 5 further fiddled with ages in order to serve their rhetorical goals. In Genesis 4 we have two different lineages that are presented. We have a wicked lineage that goes from Cain to Lamech where we have Cain as the first murderer and then Lamech is murdering people and saying if Cain is going to be avenged I'm going to be avenged even more. And we also have in that lineage someone named Erod which is just one letter different from Jared. And we have somebody named Methusael which is very close to Methuselah. Uh, we also have Enoch as the son of Cain in that line. And then the other lineage is the righteous lineage from Seth to Noah. Now in Genesis 5 we only have one lineage, it's just Seth to Noah, but the characters from Genesis 4 are worked into Seth's lineage. So Erod goes to Jared, Methusael goes to Methuselah, we have Enoch who is moved from the second position into the seventh position, which is a position of prominence. So we have ten patriarchs before the flood with Enoch in the seventh position who is explicitly mentioned along with Noah as being righteous, walks with God, is taken by God at 365 years of age. Now interestingly, this arrangement seems to match a version of the Sumerian king list that was in circulation in the second half of the first millennium BCE, particularly as we find in the book Babylonica by the historian Barassus, which also has 10 antediluvian kings and the seventh is in a position of prominence. Seven was an important number. And this figure ascends to the heavens and has an audience with the Mesopotamian sun god. Interestingly, Enoch is taken at 365 years, the number of days in a solar year, according to the calendar at this time period. So there are scholars who argue that Genesis 5's rearrangement is reflecting what's going on in the Sumerian king list at this time. But there's something even more interesting about how later editors changed Genesis 5. Because remember, we've got four characters from the evil lineage from Genesis 4 worked into Seth's line in Genesis 5. We have Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, and Lamech. Now Enoch is explicitly mentioned as righteous and does not die in the flood. But in the version of Genesis 5 that many scholars think reflects the earliest version, the one found in the Samaritan Pentateuch, the ages of the patriarchs indicate that Jared, Lamech, and Methuselah died prematurely the same year as the flood. In other words, they were killed by the flood. So in probably the earliest version of Genesis 5, these wicked patriarchs from Cain's line that were worked into Seth's line were identified as wicked because they were being killed off by the flood. But then we have the Septuagint translation of this chapter and we have the later Masoretic version of this chapter that fiddle with these ages so that those three don't die in the flood. Which indicates the editors of Genesis 5 quickly decided they wanted all of the patriarchs to be considered righteous rather than to have three of them identified as wicked and as being killed in the flood.